We're here in the uh, brand new Peterson Gallery at the National Firearms Museum where we have on display uh, 400 of the finest firearms in the world from the personal collection of the late Robert Peterson. And uh, we have here one of, uh, certainly one of my very favor favorites and one of the uh, earlier guns in this particular uh, collection. This is a double barrel percussion shotgun uh, by Brun, B-R-U-N, of Paris. And uh, it's known here and elsewhere as the Devil's Shotgun. Uh, it's an exquisite work of art. Uh, Wendy Cunningham from the museum is here with us. And uh, Wendy, you've done a little bit of research into the display that this was entered in? Absolutely, I have. Um, interestingly enough, in 1849, it was Napoleon's first exposition. It was also the last industrial exposition. Um, this was entered into a contest that showcased the best inventions of the time uh, in Paris. Yeah. And there's another Brune on display elsewhere from a later exposition? Yes, uh, that one is on display in the Met Museum, notably because Tissot, the famous French engraver, was the one who did the work on that along with Brune. Ah, okay. And this particular Brune gun uh, features just some wonderful engraving, uh, beautiful carving on the wood, but there's also kind of a recurring theme on here that has led to its nickname, and that's of images of little demons and imps and devils in a, a number of nefarious pursuits <laughs> uh, all over the gun. Just tiny little fanciful figures. Here's a little devil pulling a wagon with his tail, and there's dragons on the hammers, and uh, uh, just different scenes all over the gun. And uh, enough so that uh, there were some unusual images uh, and Wendy did a little bit of research on them. And uh, um, for example, there is, a, uh, where is it on this? The guy uh, uh, riding, the, riding, riding an ass backwards. What's that about? Well, um, this is a reoccurring theme throughout art history and history in general that um, it is to show a gentleman being humiliated. He's situated, in, in this case, on a donkey facing backwards. Um, it's, it's humiliation, it's idiocy, and that uh, seems to be the message they're trying to convey about what, perhaps uh, royalty of the time, I'm not sure. Okay. But, uh, well, there's another reoccurring theme here that uh, figured into political humor also. There was a, an implement uh, illustrated three different places on, on this gun. One, once here, uh, the devil's pointing uh, to someone kneeling in front of him and the implements there. And also the guy on the uh, donkey has it strapped to his back and then it appears uh, with the person in the wagon on this side. Uh, and you were able to identify that as a, a recurring theme? Yes, it, it appears that this, which looks like a large syringe, was something used in that time period uh, to relieve a common remedy, an ailment, mm -hmm. uh, and it was called a clyster syringe. Used. Okay, so it's a, a hygienic and medical tool, but also was kind of a figure in uh, uh, French humor and satire of the time. Yes, apparently uh, King Louis the Fourteenth was known to use this device several times a day, so it, it often appeared in political cartoons of the time. Very cool. Any other images on there uh, catch your fancy or you were able to uh, to research? Well, the Rococo-esque dragons on the side are exquisite. Uh, minute detail that, you know, it's it's hard to see unless you're really close up and holding it. The scroll work is amazing. Somewhere on here we have Fortune and her wheel, which mm -hmm. um, was a nice addition. Down here on the, on the buttstock. Yes, stock. there she is blindfold and all, and I particularly like the, the devil here with the pot. Um, <laughs> he's got a pitchfork and he's got a cauldron uh, with some, some poor little souls yes. peeking out of it. Extremely uh, mischievous. On a, yeah, on a, uh, uh, with gold flames. They've used several different colors of precious metals in uh, uh, defining these uh, uh, engravings and inlays, which is uh, a very unusual. Um, I love the finish on this gun. There's, there's this very deep, dark blue here, and then there's this almost soft, very soft moonlight gray for the rest of the barrel. Uh, just a beautiful gun, uh, fun, it catches your fancy. 
Uh, you know there's even more story there Absolutely. than what we know, and we'll we haven't hunting. figured it out. <laughs> yeah, and the casing is uh, equivalent to the gun. It's just an exceptional casing, uh, French fitted, which is what you call it when a casing uh, is fit to the exact outline of the items that are in it with all the possible accessories you could want. Um, and they are uh, uh, beautifully done accessories. The horn is actually a flattened uh, horn uh, very beautifully fit with a powder measure on it. Uh, it appears that this gun was accurate enough to be used not only as a smoothbore shotgun, but also with a, a single round ball. Uh, it's not rifled, but uh, it should have a good level of accuracy with that. There is a bullet mold to cast a ball to fit it. And equally as engraved. Yes, it's all yeah. beautifully engraved. And uh, uh, the, the general decoration style of the case, uh, do you have uh, any comments on that? Again, uh, typical of the era, it's the, the gorgeous flowing scrolls of the Rococo time period, um, which again appears in the leather tooling there. Mm -hmm. The leather flask, and it has uh, something I've not seen before on an accessory, but actually there is a viewing window on the wow. uh, uh, charge to where you could actually uh, see the measured charge that pours out before it's loaded. So very, very interested in, interesting that way. Another unique feature of this gun is the actual material that the ramrod is made out of. Um, I had heard of these before. I'd never actually seen one. But uh, uh, the ramrod is made out of baleen, mm -hmm. which of course is the material that's in the, uh, uh, the feeding apparatus of a whale and uh, it would be That's used only on the very finest guns, uh, a very rare substance, uh, but kind of the, the mid 19th century equivalent of fiberglass in that it'd be very strong and a little bit flexible and really the, uh, the finest substance that you could use for a ramrod. Absolutely. So uh, it's a gun that we're very, very proud to have here, an exceptional piece, and uh, it's on display at the museum every day. Uh, open from 9.30 to 5 uh, every day of the week. And if you can't get by to see us at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia, you can see this gun and all its details and really zoom in to get a close look at it on our website, nramuseum.com.